This is Real Sales Talk. Real sales advice from real sales practitioners. Giving you tips on how to dominate your sales quota are your co host Sean Mitchell and Phil Keen. We don't have a process for referrals at most companies. I go into a company, I say, what's your referral process? They have no, well, what do you mean? I think that, I think that goes back to the premise that why do salespeople suck at prospecting? I mean, number one reason why they suck at prospecting is they don't actually do it. If you are successful and nobody knows in, 2000, in 2016, 20, 2025, you're not successful. If you ever want to find out what's going on in the company, get in the car and spend a day with the top three salespeople. You'll find out in five minutes. Because you can't be a trusted advisor without two things, trust and advice. I mean, you need both of them. Tech Talk 11, here we go with Phil Keen. What's up, man? How are you doing today? What's up, Sean? Always a pleasure. Let's get back to just you and I and, uh, and right. get into a little, right. uh, so the good old days. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was um, flip my funnel, right, in, in Atlanta. Yeah. Oh man, I'm telling you what, like it is uh, extremely impressive what Terminus has built, um, and how I'm I'm extremely impressed with how they've been able to separate into two different businesses almost. Where Flip My Funnel is its own thing, and Terminus is its own thing, and and they let it take on a life of its own. And I think that actually is it's how they've been able to grow it um, so much faster. It, 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 it's impressive. So it's cool. Really, really yeah. cool. I've, I've, I've only, I haven't followed it that closely. Um, the, the only, I think the only way I know about it is from you and, yeah. and Morgan Ingram. Yeah, I'll tell you what though, it's, it's good content. Uh, I would the, have people that are semi-competitive or at least compete with budget with them. They invite like that attend or that are, they're even up speaking on stage. Um, definitely have their customers advocating out there for them, but um, just overall, just they, they, they can, Put together a killer lineup and uh, definitely recommend it. Did you run into John Barrows there? I thought I remember you mentioning something like that when we interviewed him. Did not see him. Uh, I know he was supposed to be there. I actually didn't run into him. Uh, Coco Sexton was there. Ran into him a couple times, and obviously Morgan Morgan was on the panel with me, uh, so he and I chatted. And, Saw a photo. Uh, yeah, it was fun. So <laughs> was uh, admiring your um, your 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 sharp looking shoes. Thank you. I appreciate awesome. it. <laughs> cool. So should we dive in here? Yeah, let's do this. Let's yeah, I'm it. gonna kick it over to you. You've got a couple of uh, really interesting um, uh, tools, so why don't you run through those and we'll kind of chat about it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I want to show you guys uh, data and I. We're talking about data and I. So I'll uh, I'll scare, share my screen for anybody that's playing along in the video. Here in audio, we'll talk through it. So uh, data and I is a, is a pretty cool tool. Uh, I saw a demo the other day. Um, I'm extremely impressed. That's why I wanted to bring it to, to you, Sean, and, and we could talk about it a little bit. Um, so Data Nice does uh, a pretty cool backend tool for sourcing, especially for SaaS companies uh, that allow you to source um, technographics is kind of their go to market. That allows so things like finding out what marketing uh, automation software they have, CRM they have, if they have e signature. Um, all the things in the background that you might be potentially running uh, optimizedly. Um, which allows you to go just an extra layer deeper than, than firmographics. Um, so I, I, I am a firm believer that the better that you can get and the more granular you can get in types of your approach um, and, and the faster you can consume that data so you can personalize your message, um, that it's going to be, it's just going to help you win and hit a home run every single time you're sending emails or, or communicating to prospects or talking to people. Um, so if you're in the SaaS world, data nice is just at that. Um, but I don't know how familiar you are with, with data nice, Sean, but uh, I've only heard the name. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's definitely a tool to check out. Um, so they, the whole thing with them is, is this data enrichment, uh, filling out some of the data that you have. Mm -hmm. Um, it says it gets insights to your prospects, technology choices, um, in any CRM records. So their, their integrations seem like they're pretty strong. Um, visitor analytics also lets you know kind of who's, who's viewing your website without kind of giving the information. Um, so overall, I thought it was a cool tool. It's pretty strong. Um, do they do that by, by by remembering IP address? How do they know when yeah. that per particular person is online? So I believe they have a data set that allows them, and I, I don't know this for sure. So maybe you can schedule a demo with them if you're if you're super interested. Um, but what they do, I believe, is they take the IP addresses that they have stored in this other database, 
and allows them to back door and say, Hey, I know that these people exist and this is what they're doing. Um, but I was, I was really impressed by the demo. Um, cause he showed me live in the software, um, where it was, I told him, and I, I didn't, I don't let people give me canned demos whenever, whenever they demo me. So it's, no, I would, I would function this way. If I was building it, I would do this, this, and this. Show me, I need people that use Salesforce, um, that are potentially like DocuSign customers that also have XYZ software included. Um, but I also need, right, I need 500 employees to 5,000 employees, and I need them out of this region. So I need this state, this state, this state, this state, this state. Uh, and by the way, they're in this industry. So I was able to go that granular, press a button, and I came up with like 17 results off of like going that deep into it. So there, the, I was thinking about it from a different perspective, actually. So this is more of a prospecting tool, it sounds like. If you're looking for... Um, you know, a particular yeah. business or a vertical, you want to grow vertical and start to, to reach out to some people in those verticals, this would yeah. be the tool to use. Uh, I think it's a little bit of both, right? So I think it's more, uh, it can do some of the marketing side, like the visitor analytics and, and data enrichment um, that a lot of the marketing automation stuff will do. Um, but I think it goes a little extra layer deep. So for instance, if you, if you fill out a form, um, you can take their data to enrich that form uh, and put it into your CRM. That way you're able to take um, like let's just say you, you divvy things out by region. Um, I'm assuming what happens when you fill the form out, you can take it, fill in the state or fill out, Hey, this person lives in the patch with everybody that uses Salesforce first dynamics. Um, you can take that data and then give it to the appropriate person based off of, of what's filled out. So without having to fill all the data out, they can, they can enrich some of that stuff. So they do some of that. Um, but they also have the, I'm a prospector, I'm a BDR, an SDR, ADR, I'm an account executive, I'm, I'm looking for my patch. They have that where you can list build as well. So uh, it's an extremely impressive tool from, what I, from the demo I saw. So um, cool. yeah, the whole idea of technographics, I think it just takes it the extra layer deep um, where you can really get a really um, tight message uh, that's really specific to somebody that says, hey, I know you're using these three technologies, um, I know that our tool works with XYZ technologies extremely well, but also we have, based off your industry type, this person, this person, this person, or these companies um, that work extremely well with us. So uh, it gives you the ability to, to really do some, some um, not so much personalization, but call it like small net fishing where you're, you're making the big world small uh, and you're able to kind of scale things out quickly. Because um, I think that's the, that's the world people are in right now where – Everybody wants to highly customize and highly personalize, and, and it's just so hard to scale that. You can do that with um, a, a dozen or two dozen companies, but you can't do that with hundreds and hundreds of companies, so it's hard to scale. Um, I think tools like Data Nice give you that ability to grab that data, consume the data, and then push it back out, um, where you can, you can build out some templates and it still feels custom because it's by industry and it's by your technology stack that you're having, uh, that you're using today. So uh, it's a cool tool. I like the idea of what it sounds like is targeted outreach, whether that's on the marketing side or the sales side. Right. The more targeted you can get, yeah. like you were saying, if you know that if you have insight or data into this particular company in this department is using these two other pieces of software that would be that, that's a complement or that you typically find as a complement to yours, that's probably really, really key because then, then yeah. you know you're you've yeah. got you've got yeah. more leverage. Yeah, exactly. I think you're spot on, uh, and I think it's it's an interesting tool for anybody, especially in the SaaS world. But even in our, if you're um, if you're looking for really just a good data tool to to be able to build out a good company list and, and prospect list, I think it's great. So, cool. um, also great for like enriching forms for anybody that, that that needs that. So, sweet. Yeah, cool tool. So, what's what's your tool today? Or you have yeah, to do, actually, yeah, I got a couple of them that I'll, that I want to talk about. So, first one, let me share my screen. Uh, we're gonna go. Here we go. All right, we'll start with this one since it's up and ready to rock and roll. Share. All right, so we're going to attach.io. This is an interesting tool. I've, I've actually this this company's been on my radar for a little over a year. I think it's interesting. I think they do a nice job at the user interface, but what it is, it's, it's a software that will help you track engagement in your presentation, your proposal, your white paper, whatever it is. You can upload that document into this, 
and then send it out in an email. So they give you the link. Okay, so I have uploaded this, this PDF here, 101 sales email templates. This is actually a really, really cool one. So um, I create link. So what it does is, oh, I'm gonna send it out right from here. So let's go, should I send it to myself? Let's see here. Everyone's gonna have my personal email address. <laughs> um, um, big baller company. Here's my company name. Let's see, I'll give you more options. Email me when viewed. So, so um, allow downloading, set expiration date, password protect, remind me if not viewed. I actually like that one. And that's, that's probably a good segue into um, the next software that I'll talk about here. But let's create the link. So I've got the link. And then I believe if I've given, yeah, so I can copy this and I think I can email it out. Or does it already send it out? I should have checked this, but I just got access to this today. So I'd imagine that it sends it out automatically, but I've got the link right here. Not yet viewed. Okay, so what it's going to do is it's going to notify me when someone engages in that message. So here's that one that I just sent. Actually, this, this is a different one. So... You're gonna get some nice bar graphs. You're gonna be able to see which page they're, they're most interested in and how long they're looking at that particular document. Super useful if uh, you need to know, um, if you need insight into to which particular part of the proposal or white paper they're interested in, you might be able to use um, uh, s some of that insight to target your message or tailor your message rather in, in the email or in the phone call, the voicemail that you use. So, so that, that's attach.io. That's a really interesting one. You, 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 you've heard about this one, Phil, haven't you? Yeah, so Attach is a, it, it's a cool product. Um, I don't know how long they've been around, only, only um, a short while, I think a, a year or two. Mm -hmm. um, interesting product, and, and I, like, uh, I like the tech, I like how easy it is for mm -hmm. Um, especially for like an SMB to go grab it, pick it up, and start using it. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see where that where that heads here in the next few. Totally. Years. But I, I honestly think as you're looking at the way the world works today, um, the you're not going to be sending PDFs and Word documents and Excel sheets and PowerPoint decks. You're not going to be forwarding those and sending them through email anymore. It's just it's going to take. A few years to get away from that, but there's a lot of major, major companies that are looking at technology that does this online proposal software that allows you to see what's going on on the back end and understand and make better decisions based off what happens with it. Um, and I think the companies that really get ahead of it, that have really strong integrations, um, that allow you to even execute documents inside of it, um, are going to be the ones that end up winning uh, in the in the long run. Yeah, absolutely, so. and, and and this is this is a bit uh, one sided, so it's it's a single trick pony. Yeah, you 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 upload your document to attach.io, <clears throat> you say who you want to send it to and send it out, and that's it. Uh, what it's missing is something like maybe what Octave does, where it's a little bit more comprehensive, allows a little bit more in, in integration into, um, it's a little bit more full full function. So, yeah. would you agree with that? Yeah, I think there's there's different value props. So I think something like this is is super easy for you and I decide, hey, we're going to go sell out massive sponsorships for real sales talk, and you and I need a good piece of tech. Mm -hmm. um, so anybody we're looking for sponsors, you guys, uh, you guys want to be a sponsor? Contact Sean. You yes. have his, you have his Gmail address actually. Yeah. Just popped up. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's something like that where you and I need to get it. We have five salespeople. We have three salespeople. We just need something that's an easy piece of tech. Um, and it's a heck of a lot um, more functional than grabbing a PDF or a Word document and trying to go find out in my local hard drive. Um, if you look at why Octave was created or, or these attached companies or PandaDoc or anybody else that lives in that space, um, I think you, you have to really go back and look at the fundamental problems that a seller runs with every single day uh, and the most basic stuff, which is, which is what Attach covers. Um, which is I can't find the document I'm looking for and I need to find it quickly and then I need to be able to upload it and send it and deliver it. And that and that's all they need to do. 
And then I think you go, some of the other companies might take it, like Octave, for instance, I think it's more around the seller burden that they have to deal with on a day-to-day basis of things like, um, I have to deal with finance, I have to deal with marketing, I have to deal with um, product to be able to prove things before it goes to the door, or whatever it is. Like Those are things where some of that seller burden, just by having a really nice workflow from when it comes out of a out of a CRM system or, or whatever back office people are using. So, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, but see. love the tech. The tech. The, the tech is awesome space. So yeah, absolutely. It's really. I mean, the more insight you have into into a prospect or an opportunity, a lead, the better it is for you as a salesperson. I think because it just lets you know who you need to to, to focus on. And we were talking about this a little bit earlier. Um, and maybe this was this maybe this is before we hit record, Phil. But I think the artificial intelligence piece of of sales is something that I'm paying close attention to because the more that you can have software think for you and do for you, and 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 uh, you know have have the best opportunities, the best deals, kind of bubble up to the top, or you know the more that you can have software put those deals in front of you, so that you know which ones to focus on first. Um, I, th- I think whoever starts to do that well is is yeah. going to win. I mean, I've talked about this on other other on another episode of Tech Talk, but yeah, companies like Conversica I think are really interesting. Um, I think they're in really infancy of of artificial intelligence, but you know the, the the more that the more that software can do work for the salesperson and show them who they need to follow up with, the better it's going to be for the salesperson as well as the company. Yeah, it's interesting because I think it goes kind of goes back to what we were talking about with Dana and I a little bit of the the more I can put in front of you that allows you to do this customization and personalization and make it you and me where I'm selling to Sean and and Sean's buying from Phil. And I think the more that you can do that in a sales process, it takes things like the attaches and the um, the data nizes and the converse because to just take some of that time of your day that's so monotonous and menial where you're not doing tasks that are forward facing and, and customer facing. Um, I mean, there's massive, massive enterprise companies that are issues around getting people with just getting more face time with customers um, because we spend way too much time doing administrative work when you should totally, you shouldn't be in the field filling out your CRM system. You should be face to face with your customer or, or going to find another customer. Um, there's just too much wasted time in sales and, and just, just in that world today. So. Agree, hundred percent. I was talking with someone the other day, and he was like, "Oh my gosh, they're making me use Salesforce to enter everything in. <laughs> I hate it." And I was like, "I totally know what you mean, man. Yeah. I yeah. hate hate Salesforce. It's clunky, and you know, p- part of the big pain. I mean, if if part of the big pain is if it if it did a lot of the the, the data entry, the note taking for me, right. like if there was some sort of software that could listen to my conversations, my demos, my sales calls, yeah. and then take that, to, you know, a summary of that conversation and automatically put it into a CRM, that yeah. would be incredible. Yeah, there's I gonna, would love that. There's gonna be a piece of tech that's out there that allows you to annotate your calls mm-hmm. and, and build out notes. I mean, there the things I've seen out there are just to annotate if you and I were to annotate this, it'd be like 50 bucks to do it. Um, so I think it's something where there's gonna be a tech that allows you to do it well, not perfectly, but well enough. Um, and I, I can see that. Uh, a cool piece of tech we should talk about one day is exec vision and, and the way that they take um, conversations and they, they allow you to search for it. Um, so you can go into it, and if you have a keyword, let's say I'm talking about a competitor, or I'm talking about pricing, or I'm talking about whatever that is, they can go and take um, search for. I want to find everybody that that works for Acne Corp because it's one of my 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 competitors. You can go in and search Acne Corp and find it and put that data in there. But you can grab just that spot of the conversation. Um, I'd be interested to see that they can annotate a little bit in the light and put some notes into CRM because I think that's that's definitely the future of AI. I think is is that menial administrative work. Um, yeah, massively helpful. And, and not just. I mean, uh, we're talking now wish list here. We're getting yeah. a, a little bit, a little bit off track, but I think it's an interesting topic to to yeah. dialogue about. Um, annotation is one thing, but imagine if a software could understand feeling and emotion and tone. Yeah. Right now, it doesn't do that, right? right. So even even if you dictate something on your, you know, on your phone, yeah, um, it doesn't it doesn't understand where to put the emphasis. 
And that's right. one of the problems with digital communication right now and why right. video is so helpful. Um, and why face to face, of course, is, is, has always been, been effective. But yeah. imagine a software that listens to your conversations and senses when a buyer gets excited about a particular feature that, that yeah. you're demoing in the software. I think that would be insane. It would be. And, and you know what? There's talk out there that does that for HR now with with interviews and stuff that allows you to pick up tonality of voice and say this person is X or Y or their personality is Z because the way they said something or, or their their tone of their voice when they said it. Um, so there's some interesting out, things out there that we could that that if the tech comes together and converges a little bit could could do some pretty crazy stuff. Think about um I, I, I've actually given this a lot of thought and and have considered writing, you know, either either a blog post or shoot, maybe maybe it's even it could even become a book. But there's a lot of things that I think salespeople do intuitively and and even subconsciously they pick up on cues, right? When you're face to face or or when we're talking right now, you know, I can I can I understand the tone and I understand the context of what you're talking about because. Um, I'm picking up on your body language. I can hear the tone of voice, and uh, 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 just like what you're talking about, personality. Some people talk really fast. Some people talk really slow. Some some people are in the middle. And uh, you know, when when someone gets excited, typically the, the tone of their voice gets higher, right? And 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 so that's one indicator. It's not a hundred percent foolproof or bulletproof, but right. when when someone's voice uh, goes goes up. You 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 know that they're really excited, or if they're if they're low or monotone, you know there, there's all these things that salespeople I think read subconsciously that 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 if if a software could do that automatically um, yeah. and be able if if it could learn from learn what humans know kind of intuitively, I think that would be amazing. Yeah. And I always think there's a human element to it. Um, people always ask the question like, "What do you look for in in?" in and a, and a salesperson when you hire them. Um, and one of my responses is sometimes it's, it, I look for somebody that's magnetic. Um, and I stole this from my old boss. Don't, don't make me super smart. The guy took it, right? Uh, I just stole it from somebody else. But I want somebody that's magnetic. So the idea is like, if you go to a party, it's the person everybody wants to be around or when they walk in the room, everybody wants to talk to them. Um, so a salesperson, you can't make an AI or a tech be magnetic. Um, so there's always going to be a human element, in my opinion, in inside of sales it's just the number of jobs might be less or um, they're going to turn into a little bit of a marketer but there's always be somebody touching or pushing or playing a little bit trying to make the AI work or the the technology work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cool okay so we, we we've hit that one pretty hard ah. let's um, let's transition to the next tool that I'd like to talk about which I actually I'm really excited about like I, I, I've I've installed this <clears throat> so this one's called rebump dot cc c is in charlie c is in charlie rebump is a gmail plugin and i'll pull up my my work account here so um rebump is, is a gmail plugin and when you send an email it will it will catch that and if that person that you've sent an email to has not responded rebump will automatically send a a message to that person to say, hey, just wanted to make sure you saw this, and and, and I can actually show you the the cadence or the they call them bumps. And do you allow, does this allow you to pick a template? And you can. It's this you, template and this cadence. Yeah, there's a default one, okay. but you can also create your own new bump sequence. Got it. Which is cool, because then you can you can customize a little bit more if you know that you're, you know. I mean, and, 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 and I want. This is even great for internal email. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. I mean, think about all the times you're like, oh, shoot, that guy hasn't replied to me. And I was supposed to follow up with him, you know, you know, last week. So <clears throat> you can see here, if, if you're watching the video version of this, uh, I'm, I'm showing the different emails that, that the system will automatically send out if no response has been received. And I'll just read them. So bump one is... Um, Hi, just wanted to make sure you got the email below. Thanks. And then bump two is just checking in. Wanted to make sure you got my email. And again, this is this is if no one has replied. If someone replies, then it kills the the the, the cadence or the the series. So the first bump is three days after you sent the first email. This is this is the standard default one. Um, the second bump would be day seven. 
and then bump three, just trying again. Would love to hear back from you. That's day 14. Bump does four. It, does it reply to the chain? Yeah. Got it. it. Does. Yeah. So I think you can, yeah. It, it, according to this here, it's, it's your original email will be here. So Got it. yes. Okay, yeah, there you go. I see it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so, so day 21 is bump four. Uh, I thought I'd try it one more time. And you can add on to the default one, or you can just create your own, which is cool. So uh, I, I, I actually was going to, I was trying this last night, and uh, the website was not coming up, and therefore I wasn't able to um, send send an email out inside of Gmail. So hopefully they've, they've got their bugs worked out. But in idea and concept, I really, really like this, because this, this yeah. solves a pain point that... Right. The, the, the salespeople encounter all the time. Yeah. And I think there's only where if you have the ability to really, I mean, these are just obviously probably semi default messages for you there, but if you had the ability to say, all right, these types of prospects probably get this, um, does it allow you to do different types of quote unquote cadences, um, or, um, bumps based off of who you're emailing, you can pick, hey, I want them to be on track one instead of track four or track five or whatever it is. Yeah, I do believe that you can you can determine different bumps because I saw an email address. Um, let's see if, if I create a new one here. I'm not sharing my screen. But um, yes, it does create. I'll just show this to you. It does create a um, a new email address. So when you select that particular it. bump, it 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 um, assigns it this email it. address. Perfect. So sequence. Okay. So the exactly. sequence. We call it a sequence. Okay. Sequence so, one. Sequence two. Got it. Yeah. So so when you go and compose your email, um, you, you can you can. I don't know how you change this or if if this is. Let me see if I can move this um, or expand it. Uh, yeah, I bet you can select it. So if you create a new sequence, then you're going to see this down below. You're going to be able to select from those different sequences here. Okay, and that it's going to add that unique email address to the blind carbon copy. No, that's perfect. That's great. That's cool. So where I think that they could take this is um, intelligent bumps. So if some, and this kind of gets into the Conversica thing. Yep. If if someone responds with a particular message, then add them to this bump, you know, half halfway down the first one. Yeah. So it's it's like this intelligent kind of uh, artificial intelligence thinking for you to communicate a different message. Right. Or hey, they opened it or haven't opened it. There's mm -hmm. a totally different message of I saw like I saw you open it. You wouldn't say that, but right. You know, that hey, because you opened it, I'm going to give you mm -hmm. a little bit more aggressive message, um, or maybe I'll lay up a little bit depending on where we're at in, in this. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. So that's an interesting one. Um, I think anyone can 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 use that right now. Yeah, and it's a simple tech that at very least it's it gives you something to go do. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of, of just massive activity, right? I want to do smart things, but this is this is the type of technology that if you use it appropriately, um, it's it can be extremely powerful for you. So totally, hundred percent. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up. Um, I do want to tease the next real sales talk that's coming out. It's one that we've already recorded. Yeah. It's Phil, uh, sorry, um, Ray Carroll. Ray Carroll, yes. <laughs> um, that was a really, really good one, wasn't it? Yeah, Ray. Ray is awesome. Um, amazing sales leader. Uh, absolute amazing sales leader. And uh, he's talking about how to how to build the team to to crush the quota. Right. Yep. Yep, and this is from a, a, a VP of sales perspective. So um, we come at him from a, a couple of different angles, and he's just got some fantastic insight. Um, we were talking about this offline, but he, um, you were sharing about how he really just he knows his craft. He's really in it. He really he really lives it from day to day. Yeah, and he's he's definitely somebody that's like extremely passionate about sales and sales leadership, uh, and you can tell. Um, the way that he interacts with his employees around him, that he is a, he's a, is a servant leader that wants to make them successful. Um, just, I don't know, he's a wealth of knowledge and, and an amazing sales leader to know and, and, and to, to listen, to talk to. So, yeah. 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 So that's the next episode that, that will be uh, episode number two of season four and should come out here in the next uh, few days. I just got to do a little bit of polishing up on it 
and then uh, we'll, we'll publish it out. But hopefully, Tech Talk 11 will tide you over until then. So thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you on the next Real Sales Talk and Tech Talk.